Well, today we're gonna do a wilt start on this truck. If you guys saw the video, you saw what this thing looks like in the oil. It is like a milkshake. It is just awful. So it's very controversial. See how bad that is. That is engine coolant mixed with engine oil. All right, so this will be a controversial thing I'm about to do. Uh, many folks would be like, it's worth it to drain the oil, put fresh oil in it before I try and start it. But what you need to realize is, as far as I'm concerned, the damage is done. When that coolant mixes with the oil, whatever's happened to that thing probably isn't going to get any worse because I don't have a load on the truck. I just want to start it. I just want to see if it will start. It has dead batteries, so I'm in the middle of doing a, a test with the, the start all, this 10,000 amp uh, starter. And uh, I want to uh, I want to use it on this truck. I know it's controversial. Guys are going to say you should just drain the oil, you know, put clean oil in it. Well, listen, you can do that, but it's going to look like that in just a minute or two because you're not going to get all that nasty oil out of there. It's going to take a lot of cycles of oil, clean oil, to get that crap out of there, and probably a little bit of dish soap or some type of detergent. It might take, but it'll take oil change after oil change after oil change. And if I'm trying to clean an engine up like that, I don't use fresh oil. I change oil in one of my other trucks early, use that oil. Contaminate used oil instead of fresh oil. It makes more sense to me. So, anyways, let's move on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into the clip where I'm testing that thing because I'm doing two videos at one time here. And I'm gonna, we're going to see if that thing will, if this, will this engine start? And at the same time, I'm testing this jump box that I just got. All right, we're going to start it now. Turn on cycle key. You have, to, you have to turn the key on sometimes to energize or activate the the jump box. Okay. All right. What we want to do is see what the oil pressure is. All right. It's got around 25 pounds of oil pressure. You can hear it's running with a miss. Yeah, there's something really wrong down the bottom end. So. There's no sense in running it any longer, doing any more damage. Um, so we have an engine miss, so it's a very good possibility that one of the cylinder liners has uh, has been damaged and is letting coolant into the oil because we have a lot of blow-by coming out of the draft tube as well. So as far as I'm concerned, this engine is probably not a repair situation. It is far more cost-effective for me to just swap the motor. This truck only has 161 on it, I think. Yeah, 161,000 miles. 161, 249. Engine warning light on. Um, so, at 161,000, it's far too clean of a truck to take apart. I believe I will probably move forward with uh, replacing that engine with another one I have that has actually a little lower miles than that which is good and it also has an allison automatic instead of this eaton fuller auto shift so uh we'll swap that out too you can hear my jump box it's been 45 seconds it's probably going to shut off let's see what the code is e2 i'll have to look that up and see what it is but um hey it it's doing it you know that's uh that's not bad so that's a 7.6 liter that we're starting with completely dead batteries i mean there's nothing you can't get anything out of this at all they were so dead yeah look key on key on you get nothing so they're completely dead so that's a good testament to that jump box it's still not we haven't tested it to what they say it'll do up to a I believe they say a 15 liter diesel so we'll check that next but nonetheless hey this thing runs you know um so this truck will be i think i have the box sold so we move we will be removing the box and lift gate soon and uh once that's off we'll then i'll decide where we're going to move with the plan i i'll tell you what i'd really like to do i love the fact that it's air brakes I don't like hydraulic brakes in one of these trucks. I think hydraulic brakes belong in pickup trucks and smaller, not these trucks. Um, so what I've been leaning towards is taking my blue, um, my little blue rollback 
and swap a motor and tranny in it. But I'm, I have another motor and tranny. I might as well just sell that truck as a cabin chassis. And I'd like to take my rollback bed off that truck and possibly put it on here or sell mine completely buy another bed just put on this one and build this one from the ground up i wish this was air ride rear suspension not leaf and i have purchased a couple a couple frames frame cuts with air ride suspension so that might be a possibility um yeah i'll work on that some more but next thing we'll have to do is if we get this sold which i should know tomorrow for sure they said they want it we just haven't received payment so um I don't remove them until they're sold and paid for because otherwise they're just in my way. And if you take a box like this, you put it on the ground, this guy will fill it full of stuff, guaranteed, and then it never leaves. That's why I don't take them off. So um, that might be what we do next. All right, so I've sold the box off this truck. And uh, since I did, I told the people that, uh, that bought it, I would make sure the uh, lift gate works. Um, the lift gate currently is missing the electro hydraulic unit, which we have. I was going to use it on the mini truck and uh, end up not working out the way I wanted it to. So we'll be able to put it to use on this and uh, make a few bucks. So I'm going to install it on here and then we're going to test this and make sure everything works like it's supposed to. <laughs> So we try to get the nuts off, but they're on their way too tight and rusty. So he's heating them up and we're able to get them off that way. The nuts won't be any good to reuse, obviously, but um, you know we can put new ones on because they wanna use those too, just to get it home and then. Yeah, they can replace the U-bolts and the nuts when they get home. But the heat, the heat is doing a good job. Let's get them off. So. Soak these down for days. Yeah, I just didn't quite cut it. Most times we just cut them with a plasma cutter, but you know, since they want to temporarily reuse them, then you can't do it the easy way. Yeah, I don't like to reuse these. Sometimes they stretch. You get rust jacking, they can weaken them. So, I just need, normally take the plasma cutter, just cut them off, but so they need a way to temporarily get it home, so. Which, I mean, that's safer than trying to chain it or something, so.
this side done? That's this side done. Okay. Now we'll do the other side. All right, this side's all done. And on both sides, I needed to cut the box loose from a lift gate. So I just torch cut that little piece right there. So the next thing I want to do is, because we're taking this off and they're they're taking lift gate too, I need to cut the frame off right there. So we're going to take skid steer probably, lift the back of the box up enough that I can get in there with a torch without cooking that wood there and uh, slice the frame off with a torch. i got to be careful because I can't take the pressure off that pump yet because it'll just let that lift gate fall down. So I have to hold that on there and get the forks underneath this. So we're gonna take the lift, the skid steer, lift this up, put a block across somewhere to hold it up, and put the forks under this lift gate. ready to go so now we just lift from the front lift from the back and they can back their truck up underneath it just like double check sometimes they'll have a marker light wire up towards the front that uh, comes up here and does all the marker lights down the down the front and the top that should be it The truck doesn't run, so we're just using the record to pull it out from under it. 
Whoa, stop. You're good. I guess he can't see me in the mirror. Okay, then. Okay, so we got it off. It's on jack stands on the front temporarily. He'll be here, like, any time to get it, so. And then the back has the lift gate to support it. And we just kept the skids here under there, because, like I said, he'll be here any time. So we'll just lift it back up. We already have the chains still hooked up on the front and we'll just hook them to the gradle and should be good to go.